I'm Jesse Lubinsky. I'm Donnie Piercy. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Heil, host of the Partial Credit Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. You have entered the High Tech Podcast, joined by me, one of the hosts, and Will Illingworth, also a host. Here he is. Hey. We are the High Tech Podcast. Welcome to our podcast. That's it. That's all I got season for you. Season five. Season Opening five. Season. That's right. Season five. How could I forget to make sure I talk about that? It is the beginning of... I got a little... I don't know what that voice was I just I did, mean, what do seasons but, even mean, really? Like, are yeah, they even I mean, real... They are real, and this is the fifth one. Um, welcome to season five of the High Tech Podcast. Boop, boop, boop. Seasons for us just mean that we've unleashed ourselves to do more series and stuff. We were, we were limiting ourselves because we were in a season. No, I'm excited for what we have planned for this season. We've already got some guests lined up. We've got, as we alluded to in the final episode of season four, the the Ted Lasso might be joining this season. <laughs> Not... Not like him, actually. (laughs) Let's be very clear. Unless you're listening. I I think, I do think we joked when we said we were going to do a Ted Lasso thing. I was going to try and reach out to Brett Goldstein. Yeah, you were going to like make it your mission to get Brett Goldstein on the podcast. Yeah. Um, So we we haven't done it yet. So Brett, if you're listening, because clearly I know you're an avid listener of the High Tech Podcast, we'd love to have you on here. Um, Will might have a heart attack, though. So I'm not sure we can. I would. Nerd I know, out. yeah. Like, if, just, if you guys man. haven't picked up on it already, like, Ted Lasso is, like, Will's favorite show. Like, Will, I, I, was, I was with some new friends this weekend, and they were like, have you ever seen Ted Lasso? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, have I seen Ted Lasso? I was like, yeah, I've seen Ted Lasso. And he's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I saw, you know, I watched it, and it was, it was a good show. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I have a friend who's, like, seen it. Like, I don't know what he's up to on season two, but I know season one is like double digits for sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen I've seen season one. I will with full integrity say 10 times. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And I don't yep. doubt that a bit, like very yep. little. I started that, like, um, my third rewatch of season three uh, yesterday. Oh, really? So, yeah. My my favorite note about how much Will loves Ted Lasso is that like we had a Ted La- we were going to have a Ted Lasso watch party um where there's a group of us and will had already watched it like it was <laughs> like like we I didn't tell him i didn't tell any of them until why, afterwards I, didn't why I expected different but like we're like there to watch the episode and will's already seen it like probably twice i don't know like that was probably his third yeah. watch i handled I it pretty well yeah, but yes did. i watched I no it idea. the night before i didn't tell anybody else that i watched it we watched it all and then after it was like hey by the way that was my second watch <laughs> Was, yeah, so we cool. love yeah. we love Ted Lasso, and he is uh, going to make it into season five for this season. But that's not yet. We're not there. That's not that's not the part of the journey that we're here at yet. No. That made total sense. <laughs> we are we we are we are at Rivendell, if you will, and Ted Lasso will be maybe a little bit later. Uh, you know, yeah, we might. The that was a bad analogy because there's a lot of bad stuff that happens between Rivendell and like the end of the journey. So exactly, exactly. This is uh, uh this is this is our podcast is like if in Lord of the Rings they did get the Eagles and they just dropped the ring off, right? There's just a there's a good chance. Awesome. It's a good journey yes. to the podcast. Yes. Anyway, like so we wanted to kick off season five with something interesting, you know, something different. Uh, so the whole episode no, is about how we feel about wrong the idea. What I was, I was just saying, so the whole episode was about our feelings on the Twitter logo. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep bringing that into the, into the vibe. No, Will and I, uh, we've been doing a bunch of interviews for other podcasts and we were like, you know what? We haven't really like interviewed each other in a while. We did that like really early on, not necessarily like formally, but we were, we were talking about who we were and, and why we were doing the podcast and things like that. And it's been a while. We're we're into triple digit episodes, people. You know, so much so that like Will and I forget what episodes we did in the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> I, I don't remember all of them. Uh, when when Josh <laughs> reminds me that something was like episode seven, like la, uh, yeah, last episode, last he reminded episode. me that I was like, wait, that was episode seven? Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah. We've done a yeah. lot since then. Um, so we decided we want to interview each other. So Will and I wrote questions down and didn't share them with each other at all which is yep. 
super dangerous. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we wrote some questions. So I, I gotta admit, I wrote these questions in between creating assignments for my course this week. Um, so right, we'll cool. see how much they make sense to to current Josh compared to past Josh when he wrote them. Um, but my first question, it's a low ball for you, Will. Okay. Right. This, this should right. be, this should be easy. We've been asked this now several times on other podcasts. Oh. What has been your favorite episode we've done uh. so far? And uh. why? What's your, what's your favorite I episode hate this of the qu- podcast? I know. When, when <laughs> breaking the fourth wall, when other podcasters ask us this question, I'm like, dang it. I have to have an answer. Okay. I'm on their <laughs> podcast. I have to be a good guest. Dang it. <laughs> A listener this is this is literally why we did this because i think we're gonna get a lot of personality here i hate <laughs> picking favorites i abhor it oh, you know there's one there's, about you. i have two favorites <laughs> in my life there are two things that are my favorite ted lasso and my wife those are the two <laughs> favorite things i have in my life hands down there's no other i love the ted lasso's in that list Right, like Ted Lasso. I also love that you said Ted Lasso first. Can we can we process that for a second? You, it wasn't. I have two favorite things in life: my wife, and then close second Ted Lasso. I was like, I have two favorite things in life: Ted Lasso and my wife. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Um. I hope this is finally the episode she listens to. Yeah, yeah. this is the one she has to say with that is Ted Lasso is my favorite TV show and my <laughs> wife is my favorite person. Okay. Like yeah. that's, you know, yeah. good save. Did not good say save. that well. You no, brought that, you brought the, that home. That's like that honeymoon reference in that episode. Oh yeah. Oh, Ooh. I forgot about that episode. That was an early episode. Is that your favorite episode? <laughs> I can I can find that one. I don't. Oh. I should open the database ahead of time while we've been doing all of this. Listener, I am sweating, like literally <laughs> sweating with laughter. Um. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I don't. I hate this question. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Three. I I kind of picked this just to annoy him. I I, 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 I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I have three and I'll, I'll qualify why I have three. Okay. I know that's not the point of favorites. <laughs> episode one means a lot to me because Josh and I finally did the thing. We've talked about this in a couple yeah. of contexts, but like it, yeah, yeah. it, it was like two years in the making before we ever actually sat down and started recording. But even once we like, even in 2021, Josh, when we were like, all right, let's do this. We, we did do like a couple weeks of planning. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> there was still a last chance there where the episode never would have gotten recorded. Oh yeah, for so sure. We finally sat down and just got recording. And, and honestly, I love Canva. That episode focused on like how to have conversations, how to have discourse, why we mm-hmm. should talk in education, something that's very near and dear to my heart. So episode one really is a big one for me. Um, you know, perfect parallel episode 100. I've I said this, I think on Chris Nessie's and maybe even on Steve Maletto's episodes, episode 100 really stands out to me because I think that's a big badge. Like not only did we do the thing episode one, but we kept doing it. Yeah. We haven't 200 episodes. Um, and then besides that, I will put up there. Okay. Episode 90, 90, episode 90. I had a great time having my brother on the podcast. That was a lot of fun for me. It was, you know, acupuncture. That was a really good, that was a good episode. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll I'll text him. I'll text him as I ask you your question. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I just, I just love that. So those are my top three. Episode one, episode 100 for those reasons. But uh, the episode with my brother was. The fourth one he forgot to mention, in case you were curious, is episode 76 the learning taxonomy series it's when justin and robin join us in a duo for the first time and That's there right. may or may not be some honeymoon reference that will make during the episode <laughs> that is ridiculous like we're like 12 year olds it's you if you're if you're looking for a good time and you haven't you haven't listened to the whole backlog of the high tech <laughs> podcast go check out episode 76 uh, you can find it on our website in the learning taxonomy series that is a that's a great that's a great time great time indeed. Oh, it hurts my yeah, cheeks. That's great. That was the, the, that was the first question, Josh. All right, um, I didn't. We didn't think this through. We should have probably gone back and forth like each, but you know, I don't think we do. I think you, that's your question for me. So nobody gets to know what your favorite episode is. They have to go listen to oh, yeah, Stimuleto or 
or Chris. Yeah, no, you unless I ask you that. We've said it a bunch of times. I would encourage, yeah, unless you, you ask know. it, but I would encourage you to go listen to those episodes uh, because what we did on other stuff, just to fact check Will to see if he said the same things. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's, um, Hey, I mean, we want to make sure we're just loving on folks in the Education Podcast Network, which I forgot to say this at the end of this episode too, but remember, here's a quick interlude. Remember, in November, Josh and I are going to be on Behind the Mic. Behind the Mic is a new podcast coming out on the Education Podcast Network where Chris Nessie, the host of the podcast and the, uh, the, the leader of the Education Podcast Network, interviews us to hear about what it's like for us behind the mic. What a thought, right? He's interviewing all of the hosts on the Education Podcast Network to hear how their podcast came to be, why they do it, what motivates them, what's encouraging, what's engaging, what their favorite episodes are, right? So listen for Behind yep. the Mic. That's in November 2023. There's going to be another uh, great couple of episodes coming out before then. So, so definitely check out the Behind the Mic podcast. And um, Stephen Maletto of the scroll 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 teaching learning leading k-12 podcast on uh the education podcast network also recently interviewed us and we'll be on his podcast want to make sure you check those out yep. we love those and we've had yeah. a lot of t- fun on those. If, and if then you want to keep Chris- up with that stuff follow us on twitter because that's where we'll repost stuff when we're on other podcasts and things like that we always try to repost when we're doing stuff chris separately interviewed us for the house of ed tech which is his primary podcast. I think we were episode 200 and something when we met him at ISTE. So you can check out that as well. There we go. Yep. There's the little promos, the cross the pod. Love. Yep. You ready, Josh? I'm ready. I'm ready. What was the first time? And don't be ridiculous, right? Just okay. take it seriously. Okay. What was the first take time you ever taught something? First time you were a teacher. You don't have to say... Like the first time you first time seriously teacher, taught someone how to do something. I seriously taught somebody. Um. Oh man, I'm trying to think. Uh, Ooh, you yeah. told you told you told me to take it seriously. My first, I want to sarcastically respond ahead, and be like, ahead. "Never, never, I've yeah. never seriously <laughs> taught anybody." No. Um. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I would say probably after college my first job i was uh, teaching students in a ministry in context while it was not necessarily formal teaching um i would consider that probably the first time i actually felt like i was teaching people like i was i was walking people and actually like ironically the distinct thing that that uh, sits in my mind as really a teaching moment was when i started bringing in other people to like guest speak and like helping work through their um messages and their speech their their speeches and actually like walking them through the process of doing it um that felt like a real teaching situation i was actually teaching them how to do what i was used to doing now for the last several years um pretty often and so i felt like i had something really to share you were in your 20s right yeah wow that's awesome yeah so yeah i go with that that sounds fun i expected I didn't know. I expected something to be around drums. Is there? Do you think that you oh, taught anybody yeah. drums? Oh yeah, I mean, I taught I taught drums, but that would have happened after. Like okay. I, I would have been doing that stuff in close to that. I would have been teaching drums, but I'm not sure. I consider my drum teaching real t- teaching. <laughs> um, like like drums is a perfect example of like a struggle in teaching. Um, I struggled teaching drums for quite a long time because I. Um. I just, this is not a, this is not trying to be a humble brag because I'm not that good of a drummer um, uh, by any means. I've um, seen him drum there, guys. He's pretty there good. Are, there are much better drummers than I am. Uh, but oh, uh, I just kind of like, I didn't, my teacher quit pretty early. <laughs> I didn't get a teacher <laughs> until later. Um, and uh, so I learned a lot of stuff on my own. And so like, it was tough for me to like, I remember trying to teach some students early on and I eventually figured it out, but I remember trying to teach students early on and I'd be like, okay, just do this and this. And they'd be like, yeah, but how? And I'd be like, crap. Uh, you just, (laughs) you just, you just do it. Like, do you not, is that not, does not everybody get four, four? Is that not a, uh oh, um, what What does that even mean? (laughs) It's a time measure. It's like every song that you listen to in the world is almost always four, four. That's a bummer. Yeah, not every you know six eights become just, much just more the ones popular. that make money uh <laughs> <laughs> anyway um yeah i would i would consider it that that was the first moment where i really felt like somebody took 
what I was giving them and they act in like, it actually impacted the way they did. And the students I worked with, that was probably the first time, especially when I got professionally into it and I wasn't just like an intern or doing things anymore. That was the first time where I really had a couple moments where like the students actually really took what I said and I could see that like, it actually changed the way that they did what they did or the way they interacted. So that's awesome. Sweet. Cool. My next question. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. It's going to be great. It's not, what's your second favorite? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you dirty rat. <laughs> oh, what did I, yeah. No, over the past four seasons, Will, we've engaged with a lot of ideas and a lot of people. So I'm curious, what has been the most important thing, or not most important, but like a big like takeaway for you or something you've learned that's changed the way you've looked at teaching and learning or technology over the last four seasons that we've done out of the podcast. Wow. You know, I think it's a pretty ironic thing that's standing out to me, right? Josh and I both have backgrounds and, or, you know, they are professionals in the learning we design have lived, field. We have lived lives. Yes, we have backgrounds. Just shut up. Sorry, you were going to the whole <laughs> thing and I just couldn't let it go. <laughs> I loved it. I love it. Um, we're both backgrounds in instructional design, learning design. Like we are curriculum adjacent people. We're not necessarily yeah. teachers primarily, which means that I would want to approach helping someone else build their course from a very systematic approach. I, I, I would say like, let's make a system. Let's, let's think this through a process. Like how are we going to write the syllabus? How are we going to, you know, get the learning objectives? How are we going to, you know, like I, there's a system to it. And you know what? The further and further along we've gone with the podcast, the more folks we've talked to, the more successful folks we've talked to, people who are who are at least showing to us evidence that they are reaching their students and, and teaching people and making a difference in the world for, for teaching and learning. I don't think that there's a, I don't, there is not one system that does it. And I don't know that it always needs to be systematic. I like systems. I like doing design systematically. But I think that there's definitely some instructors I've, I've met who could do it without that, without the systematic design. I, I, I'll admit there's probably still some things that they'd miss because of that. Some stuff in the syllabus, some stuff in the whatever. They, but like, I, I think instructional design is important, but I don't think it's actually all that. I think, I think uh, Chris Nessie, we were talking with him on his podcast, uh, you know, for, for House of a Tech, he asked a question he said, and then so many of others have said it before us, right? But like education is both science and art. And I think yeah. some of those folks who get the art side of teaching don't need as much of the science side, which which I would equate that to design, functional stuff, blah, 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 blah. Now, can they teach to this test? Could they reach a state standard for K-12 purposes? Can they get to the accreditation requirements according to higher ed standards? Maybe not, but I don't know. I just don't think that we have to do all the systematic stuff to make good education. I think it it helps a lot of folks who don't have the education <sighs> background or who don't have a heart for education. I think it, I think it is what can functionally help people get there who are not teachers by heart or by practice. Um, but somebody who's got it in their heart might just figure it out. Yeah. It's like That's an inspirational take. song in the background folks. If you were, you know, if it was just about to rise out of the, <laughs> not the SPCA song with like no. the dead dog, you know, but... no, it's like, I don't know. It's some kind of like Avengers rising from the dead, you know, type of song, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like Cap just said, like Avengers assemble and like epic, <laughs> like strings just started popping up as you're speaking. That's cool. That's interesting. That's yeah. uh, yeah, I appreciate that. I I think I picked that up a little bit too over the the podcast. I see like, that while because I talked... still love my systems. I I <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I do. Um, I love my systems. There, there is a piece to this where that experience and the being able to flex and change depending on students needs and things like that. That's you don't build a system for that. Like that's there. There's an art to that and the way people right. teach. Yeah. We've, we've just talked to so many folks, dude, across so many subject matters and so many areas yeah. that like I I've learned like, like Laura Lavery, who was on with us um, recently on, on socio emotional learning. Right. Like, yeah. So that's episode 110. So very recent to this episode, but like, um, 
I, I, this isn't to degrade her work, right? But like, she didn't come up and say like, so the 10 research articles I figured out and read and perform blah, blah, blah to make sure I can reach my students. She's like, no, I felt like the students needed to be reached. And so I tried something and it worked. Oh yeah. You absolutely. know, like that's one of those examples yeah. where it's like, I bet you, you know, I know Laura's a, a, a an excellent teacher in her, her district. She, she has to have X degrees. She has the research behind her, but she was able to show it, share that story with us of like, no, I just like, I realized yeah. the students needed something and I, and I tried to provide yeah. it. So. Exactly. Now we'll say, she had a little bit of a system, but you know, nah, he tries thing. to get just, me. He just tries saying. to get me. All right, all right, it's a system. We're on to the next question. Okay. Um, why do you do the podcast? Um, that's a good question. I ask myself that on a daily basis. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I can't get rid of this guy. He keeps asking to hang out every Tuesday night. Why do I keep doing the podcast? Yeah, I don't. You know. Yeah, I get to use Notion more. No, I'm just joking. Okay, serious <laughs> answer. Oh, <laughs> you're bringing the laughs today, dude. I love I, it. You know, this is my vibe. Um, yeah, no, I think I still do the podcast today for a lot of the same reasons I did when we started it, which is that, like, I it the we talked about this with Chris. Uh, I think it was Chris or even Steve when we were talking about. Yeah, it was, it was Chris when we were on behind the mic, uh, which you can check out in November. Um, I we shared a little bit about like listen, I came into this field of like learning development, course design, all that stuff with a background, literally having nothing to do with any of those things. Um, like, yeah. like there were some adjacent principles, like my, my degrees involved needing to know how to teach some, but it was not like traditional pedagogy and educational principles and things like that. Like I had, the only thing I knew was like flipped classrooms, a thing, right? Uh, like that's, <laughs> that's what I, I knew. And coming anything in. you might've experienced as a learner. Yeah, anything I like, experienced as like, I'd been through higher ed. I've been, I've been a TA a little bit, um, but I didn't have a background in this. And so when I, when I came here, I needed to learn stuff and, and pick up things. And the podcast at the end of the day for me, as much as I enjoy connecting with people, networking doing all the stuff it's been a great kind of like just live development tool in my life like i am a very different person in this field now several years later and i attribute a lot of that to some of what we've done on the podcast like it was yeah. the the apps we've researched the people we've talked to the conversations we've had i know way more about taxonomies than i did when we started the learning taxonomy <laughs> series um to the point that like we'll, we'll be joking occasionally and they'll be like you know Robin as the person in the ID will like throw out a taxonomy and I actually know what it means. Um, like hey. <laughs> they know how to use it. Right. Um, so that's, that's been one of the reasons I think I still go with it. The, there's a couple for me, it's still connecting with people, networking, all that type of stuff. It's been really cool getting to know a lot of different people around different areas, seeing different yeah. techniques for doing yeah. things, just Same. building relationships with friends who are in this world. Um, in a, in a different way. And that's been a lot of fun and connecting with people who listen to the podcast and stuff like that and be able to help enrich those people through what we do has been a really cool experience. Um, and you and I talk about this with Chris too. At the end of the day, well, you and I have been friends since like college. Um, and we've had our different periods in life with where we've been around each other. And the, at the end of the day, like I wouldn't do this podcast without you. So this is like, for me, it's also an element yeah. where like you and I get to have fun together. We get to do this stuff. And that whether we have five people listening to us um, or the, f the 50 on average, we're really excited about now. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, whatever that may be, I, at the end of the day, getting to do this with you and having fun doing it is, is one of the reasons I keep coming back and enjoying it and getting to, to play around uh, in a way that just uh, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think so far I wasn't, I wasn't know what to expect with these questions, what we're going to do to each other. If we're going to like, yeah, yeah. I, we haven't finished yet, but like, yeah, I, I, you, I, I like still these. have, I still I have like three more. more. It's, uh -oh. Uh -oh. And yeah. the next yeah. one, the next yeah. one. Okay. I couldn't be serious the entire time. So I had, I had to throw in one and I, and I, I warned you, I warned you. Okay. Oh, no. So oh, no. I just want you, I want you to know this should not be as a surprise. My favorite you, okay? Ted Lasso episode is season one, episode eight. There's the answer. <laughs> oh, you're okay saying favorites when it's Ted Lasso. <laughs> oh, that's easy. No. Okay. So for context, folks, there needs, there needs to be some background. So he doesn't know, don't know. We don't talk about this much in the podcast, <laughs> but my wife and I are adopting. Uh, we've been going through the process. We had a fundraiser a little while ago, a golf fundraiser, um, which was fun. And Will and Marissa uh, were there and we're really grateful for the support, but something, something came out in this, in this, this event. 
Uh, so I need I need to definitively know I need to know on the podcast. Here's here's the question, Will. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Do you have a man crush on my father? And if so, why? <laughs> I warned you that this was going to be a question and I actually, I actually put it in. It's okay. Randy, he doesn't listen to this podcast. Randy, I know you're not listening, but if you were listening, I'd like to say yes. Yeah. I've got an crush on you, Randy. You're, you're a great guy. You're a lot of fun. I, I I can think of a few things he and I could go out and have a good time doing. So yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. I have a man. There, there's there's some dad. common connections between my father Hands and Will, down. I was curious. Yes, <laughs> uh, very much. And my dad is a cool guy. So you know, I don't I don't blame Will. Uh, but it was it was quite it was quite it was quite funny. It was a good time, and I had to I had to add I had to add the question. So Josh and Sam, uh, for their adoption fundraiser, it's a golf course and, and, you know, so I don't know, I don't golf. I don't know golf. But neither I do I. My wife works at a golf course. That's why this happened. Okay. My wife is good know. at golfing, not me. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, like I just, so, so our assignment, Marissa and I get this assignment to go watch hole 10 for a hole in one. And I, I get this assignment. I look at it on the page. I'm like, what does that mean? I am. <laughs> what? I just watch a hole. Just watch. So so folks, if you're not familiar, when there's a hole in one contest, the companies and the people that be require a, a view. Yeah. Somebody has to watch it and and be the sec, the third party to say, there's like a real prize involved with this thing. So it It was a trip to to Hawaii. So yeah, there's a whole thing. Yeah. No one got it, unfortunately for them. But, uh, so we're just sitting out there at the hole hanging out. I don't know if you can imagine if that's fun or not. It was great day. Beautiful. Marissa and I just, hung out. I was working, unfortunately, pulled the laptop out on the golf course, but then your parents come down to relieve us, Josh, and your dad pulls up and Marissa literally has her foot on the gas and is like, about to pull away. I'm like, Hey, Randy, how's it going? And he's like, how are you doing? Oh, well, da, 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 da. And we're just shooting the breeze and question after question. And Marissa is kind of looking at me and your mom's looking at your dad and every, we're just still chatting. I'm like, you know, babe, if you want, you could take Kim back and Randy and I can stay. <laughs> we were just chatting because she's like, come on, I just need to go back up. I want to get to the, you know, get a drink, hang yeah, out. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's, that's the proof. Your dad and I didn't even try. They're too, they're, deep, if deep if my dad was the older version of a networking ninja, that would probably be the case. So there is, there is some, uh, there's some social butterfly connections there between the yeah. two of them. I just thought I had to ask it. I couldn't say, I, I couldn't say I was going to and not actually put I it. I hope so. you send him this episode. I really, oh, hope I'm for sure going to tell episode. him about this. Um, for sure. Anyway, I can't wait. what's, uh, what's oh. my question? <laughs> I'm going to rewrite some of these. Like I need to, <laughs> I need to, I'm like, you're going to re- re- rewrite on the fly. That's, Dang, you don't need to tell man. anybody. None of us see your sheet. What's uh are you just getting all these good laughs and I'm like, so how does your heart feel about what's on your heart today? Well, this is this is the difference between the two of us. You actually yeah. get to real emotions and I just have a sarcastically good time. Uh, you know. So what's uh what's one of the most uplifting moments in your ed tech career? Something that stands out from your work wow. In ed tech? What a fall. See, if, if anything, you're getting back at me because you're making me feel guilty that some of my questions were not <laughs> as thought provoking as yours. Um, oh, the uplifting moments in, in ed tech. Whew. So, so many to look at. Uh, let me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think for me, it would be like the first time in my role like really actually helping a professor, like a faculty member, yeah. like getting, getting something that I, that I helped with them. Cause especially early on, like, I don't know if you guys know this, right? Like, well, I mean, you know, this part we've talked about it in the podcast, unless you haven't heard about it, but like I took Will's old job and uh, like following this guy up is obnoxious. Cause he's like the <laughs> nicest person ever. Um, and uh, So I still have faculty <laughs> find me at coffee shops and ask me when I'm coming back folks. Yeah. It's been seven. Y- no. It's five been years, seven years. It's been, it's been five, five years. It'll be my fifth year. This, yeah, and that's partially because, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not as nice all the time. Digital learning also <laughs> drastically changed when when Will left. Not necessarily right, just right. because of Will, but because it's of not Josh's thing. fault. It's, yeah. It's, anyway, yeah, but. but like that first moment, I was really, I think it was tough, especially being in a field I didn't know as much. We didn't start the podcast yet, so I didn't, I didn't have some of that experience. 
rolling around. And I think like the first time, I don't remember the exact faculty member, but I remember the first time like being able to help them do something in their course that was actually really effective was, was a huge payoff for me. It was an uplifting thing that kind of kept me, kept me going. And like, they, they thanked me for it and stuff like that. It was a, it was a good moment. I was really hoping you're going to keep talking. Cause I think I got a sneeze, which would be a first on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> what? It's, I mean, uh, I can ask up, my question if you can figure no, yeah, it out by the time we're, we're done with my go question. Go for it. I don't need okay, to sneeze. I'm good. There we go. So this this one's serious, okay? This one's serious. Although I don't get down to the deep emotions. I feel like I should have shifted my shifted my vibe. Um, if you could change one thing about education right now, what would it be and why? Listener, I if you if you don't watch I the just video, like, Will kind just of like just fell like, over. Yeah, Will just kind of like backed up. This is part of the reason you should watch YouTube. You miss a whole bunch of things. One thing. I mean, like you say that, and I'll tell you five things went through know, my head immediately. But like this is you've got you've got your elevator moment with. <laughs> The god of education. I don't know who runs education. <laughs> <laughs> the commie. The commie you, of education. You, it's you, you've got, you've got that's an elevator moment with money. Um, that's, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, and you okay. All right. All right. I'll settle on one. I'll settle on one. Because okay. I, I, I think it has a ripple effect that would yeah, get to some exactly. of my others. Yeah. No grades. All grades. Gone. Just gone. Ooh, all grades. Gone. Ungrading. No more grades. Go grades are all. Okay practical tactical assessment like do it do demonstrate deliver right like but but like no grades like just just do it whatever you got to learn find some way to demonstrate it do it deliver it create an example okay. i think that if we got rid of grades some of the other ones were like get, take money out of education like literally every teacher has okay. has an infinite budget and makes a million dollars and no student pays for learning. And like if, if I could just take money out of it, that would but like I'm like, I think if we fixed grades, a lot of the other problems will actually fall into place. I, I do think okay. that. So there's my hot take. Get rid of grades. Ooh. That is that is a hot take. I mean, it's not necessarily a hot take because I totally support that. As we've done the if anything, the ungrading series like super convinced the two of us about the some of the help in that area right um right. which if you haven't checked that out go to hightechpod.us and uh scroll on down to the bottom of the website find our season and series area and uh you can find the thing that says ungrading that has every episode we've done across the whatever season that was a part of uh i don't really remember but you can check out that in ungrading as episodes well. 91 through 95 uh, featuring dr justin harbin and dr timothy shea yes exactly across those episodes all right <clears throat> Here's my fifth question. This okay. is my last question, right? Or is it? I think so. Yes. Right. Yeah, we were only supposed to do more? five. You've yeah, got I got one more. more. Yeah. If we were supposed to do more than five, then we got a problem. Uh, I'm out of questions. Do you have a man crush on my dad? Oh, that's a bad one. That's a joke. Oh, that's, a... <laughs> that's a dark, that's Guys, a dark question, uh, man. Listeners, uh, my dad's dead. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I for sure did when I saw him at the apartment. I mean, your dad's like a, uh, was a terrifying man, and like, but like in a good way. Like, like, like if I if we, like meeting your dad is like if you met Chuck Norris in real life. <laughs> you're like, oh, this like this man could protect me, like I, he yeah. could swaddle me, and then I would be safe. <laughs> well, I, let's let's tease that out for a second. Let's play the comparisons, Chuck Norris wore a hat my dad exactly hat. yeah chuck norris showed a con karate my dad yeah showed a con karate chuck norris full beard my dad full beard yep chuck norris in walker texas ranger gun everywhere yes my dad yeah. carried a gun everywhere as um, i've heard uh was there like see. a radio shack story with like a with a, a balloon or something i remember <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Listener, if you're against guns, if you don't want to hear about guns, turn off this story. But uh, I was raised in a family that that respected and used them. And my father carried a gun for much of his life. He was a part of a position and a career where he was in and out of places that might be threatening to him. So he 
he uh, used that to protect himself uh, while he worked and while he traveled and all this. So, all right, that is what it is. That's the that's the caveat. This is all legal. This is all safe. This is all respectable. <laughs> In my entire life, I never once saw my father reach for his firearm, use his firearm besides a range. Right, like we were very very dedicated, very respectful people. Not a problem. Once. Okay, there's one example, one time in my entire life where I thought he was going to. And we were walking out of a radio shack and a balloon pops over his shoulder. And I'll tell you, it was I thought I thought it was I thought it was going to be the moment. I thought he he turned, he <laughs> his hand reached, his his jacket flung. He always wore a jacket, Chuck Norris like jackets. Okay. Yes. Always wore a jacket. His jacket moved. His hand re- and he stopped himself and he just chilled out and we kept walking and I was like that was it. If there's ever going to be a time in my life I, I thought it was going to happen, that was going to be it. But anyways, yeah, that's uh that's the dad story, so Wow, okay. this this me asking you a joke question. That wasn't even going to be my question. Yeah, yeah it kind of, you know, that was not even a real, okay. I knew you pivoted off my question, but I was like, man. I was just trying intense. to be funny. It didn't yeah. really work. I mean, your dad was a great guy. So it was, uh, was. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm yeah. now convinced he was also Chuck Norris. I was joking about that, but we found too many similarities. I'm just saying. It's true. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a ginger beard. Dad did not have a ginger yeah. beard. Yeah, well, that was because he was in disguise, clearly. Oh, just, right. Didn't yeah. want everybody running around. Yeah, you I don't competed want in a tournament Chuck Norris. that Chuck Norris had previously been the champion of. Ah. Once, Actually, so you were like Chuck Norris similarity. adjacent, if you will. I'm his. I'm. I'm a Chuck Norris. You were like type. the Chuck Norris Lacroix. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> guys, he's still making me laugh. I don't even know how he's still coming up with jokes. He's just got these beats to drop on us today. Oh, fact. All right. You just hit me with your question. I think that, 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 <laughs> that drew out enough content. Okay. I'm tweaking my last question a little bit. I'm also going to, I'm going right. to tweak on the fly a little bit here. I, I am curious. We talked about this a couple times on different podcasts, but like what for you really solidified wanting to start the high tech podcast? Like why, why did you jump in on this weird journey? We decided to start, uh, you know, cause we have tons of free time. They were just like, we should do, we should do a, we should do a podcast. Um, well, again, connection here, a little, little background. My father was a high, uh, was a high tech podcast host. I don't know why that my was, brain wanted to say I that. I didn't know that when we picked the name. That's crazy. My dad was a radio talk show host. Yeah. So, uh, for, for almost 10 years, he had a, a talk show about homes and, and home, um, maintenance remodeling etc etc and i just i just always loved it and i went on the radio show a couple times he'd have me on i was a kid i was i was seriously a child i think at the oldest i was like 15 when his radio his show stopped maybe maybe 16 but i just always loved that i didn't i do enjoy this creative medium so when you when we had the idea when when we talked about it i was here like should we do this i'm like dude I love that. I love radio space. I love chatting. Yeah. I love talking. I love it. So it was, that was a big motivator. It connected to something I'd done already. And it was like, this will be our chance. It'll be my chance to do it. It'd be great. Yeah. Um, but besides that, we've, we've led this as a hobby cast to date, right? This is August 15th, 2023. Yeah. We've been doing this for two years. Um, we've not made a dollar on this. A couple of folks have given us a yeah. few bucks. Of buy me a coffee. We actually Thank can't you. say that anymore. We have technically made. I haven't withdrawn the little, dollars. They're still in the little yeah, thing. So technically we haven't we made do, money. I've done There's anything a, with it. Yeah. It's there for but, a rainy day. We came at this with that approach to like help people. That's why we do the episode yeah. pages. It's why we always try and do a new app. We don't just talk about the same apps over and over again. We always try and yeah. put new apps out there because I, I feel like this is one of the ways where like some, some of the hardest parts of my jobs have always been that I'm paid to do it, that mm-hmm. there's a, there's a job expectation around it and that just can get yeah. frustrating. This is like exercising something I love doing, which is helping people on our own time with yep. the people we want to yeah, and with you, you know, man, my buddy, my, my, my best friend, my, my, my bro, uh, my laughing guy, Jesus, you've got me. <laughs> I'm That's, dying tonight. I don't know about that nickname, but that old, uh, I'll, you know, laughing guy. Well, Sorry, I think we gotta, I, I think, I think we gotta workshop, workshop that, that one. 
but yeah, I mean, I love this medium. I love recorded audio and, and the radio or the podcast yeah. approach, but um, it just gives me and, and you and I a space to put out what I hope is helpful information that could make another teacher, another instructional designer, another tech person better at what they're doing. That's all. I love doing it. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. There you go. You got, you got yeah, to yeah, a, I got the, I got the, I got one. the, I mean, yeah, I made a pivot a little feeling bit. Feeling some things. Yeah, exactly. So now Will and I have to do what we always do, which is talk about apps. Now we have not talked ahead of time. Some of us are currently still rotating through apps in their brain, decide <laughs> which ones they want to pick. Which I don't one know of us who, that is? I don't know who that is personally. Uh, both of us. <laughs> both of us a little bit. So uh, I, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make a decision. So, Will, what's your favorite? Yeah, app? I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Listeners, audience, folks. I it's payback from the AI running. series when you like dumped the basically solve all AI problems. Josh, go. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> You're welcome. Love you, dude. All right, I I, I do have one. I've actually actually written down. I'm standing by it. I'm okay. going to roll with it. So we have talked about this one before. It's it's coming back up, but I just I love to give it airtime. Fabulingua. Uh, it was an awesome time uh, talking with Mark Beggert, yeah. and and I do hope to in the future talk to Mark and Leslie, his wife, um, about the product they've created. Fabulingua. If you've not heard the previous episode on this, which is, I don't know, recently, 104. Um, Fabulingua is an awesome app that's ling- language-based. It's a language learning tool. Everyone knows Duolingo. Duolingo has one of the best marketing teams out there. They've got a really good product. No complaints. I think Duolingo is actually good for some of the things it does too. But <clears throat> Fabulingua comes at this entire process um, from a... English language learning and and language acquisition science approach that just tickles my nerd love. I just love (laughs) every element of it. Um, So, you know, I've I've played with it a little bit, seen it, talked to Mark about it, heard what the science is behind it. I just, I think it's awesome. I think, you know, it's one thing that it's, it's going to keep it from a mass audience for right now is they are trying to like focus on uh, just yeah. a couple of specific languages and they're trying to focus on younger uh, age ranges in academia. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not going to be as popular as Duolingo. You can't go out and download it to just learn like you would Duolingo. That's the kind of dem- democ. That's the access you get from Duolingo. That's, that's yeah. useful, but Fabulingo, the technical design behind it, how they're approaching learning, how they're approaching the science of learning for languages is top notch and i stand behind it so i'd love to love to put that one out there hope more folks will check it out get in contact with mark get in contact with fabulingua uh, that information's on episode 104 so you can hear the whole conversation hear how it worked out but you can also probably get some links on this episode page because we'll just put stuff together yeah. so josh is amazing we'll just yep. we'll pull it together because we mentioned it all right yeah, josh exactly. spin the wheel <clears throat> yes put your finger in there stop the wheel Pick an app. What do you got? Pick an app. Pick my favorite app. So here's Pick here's the favorite deal. app. The, here's here's the deal. Okay, let's just be honest. I'm gonna pick a different one than the than the one that basically rules my life. But I will still mention it. Notion right. will and probably forever yeah. for the foreseeable future be my favorite app. There is Notion's just de facto not something one. I use more than Notion. But. Uh, if I had to pick like educational app that I've used in teaching contexts and in, in other contexts that I've really enjoyed, uh, Miro is still always going to be one of those ones for me that raises to the top for a lot of different reasons. Okay. It's just, there's so much that I can do with it, both in a online digital space and uh, face-to-face situations. I've used Miro in both and I have never been disappointed in either of those, those situations for me. I think the thing I love the most about Miro, especially in the digital space, is I've used it as a collaborative, it's a whiteboard to a certain extent, but really I view it as a digital collaborative environment uh, that we can use because you can upload files, you can have conversations, you can create spaces. And what I love about it, one of my favorite things to do with it is use their frame feature to create different environments in Miro for groups yes. to do group projects and things like that. Yep. And they have features for me to control that. Like I can add a timer that has music in Miro right in the whiteboard. And That's those cool. students can break out into two different frames. I've done this with some larger groups and they can do their work. They can put post-it notes. They can create graphics. They can create images. We did one where they had to like create this profile for 
uh, type of person. And they were like grabbing photos out of the like Google and dropping them in and creating like a, a profile page for a person. And I was able to both set that whole thing up for them ahead of time, um, create content, bring people in, even put instructions in the board itself, and then also set up a timer that I could start that would play music and run and would actually tell them as things were running out. And I could set different Dang. timers for different situations. I could do voting inside the board. Like I was able to actually, we had a couple options. We'd bring them together at the end. And I had the group then I set up a, vo- a poll really quick, told which post-it notes I wanted to be in the poll. And students had three votes and they could vote for which ones they wanted. Um, and we were able to use that. So like stuff like that, that's what I love about Miro. I think it has a lot of flexibility and they've done a lot in recent years to really build out the tools flexibility. I'm, I've already got plans for, I'm using it this semester as well to, uh, create interactive timelines and stuff like that for students. So I'm excited about the way you can use Miro. If you're curious more about Miro, you want to hear different things about it. We've actually talked about Miro twice on the podcast. So <laughs> <Yeah>. episode, <laughs> episode two, uh, our yep. second episode, the fateful episode where we learned that we cannot have usually more than one app. I think we, we picked talked three like... whiteboard apps and it was brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we we talked about it there in episode two, digital war- whiteboarding and background. We actually talked a little bit about our background and why we were doing the podcast. If you want to take a listen to that in episode two. And then also we talked about it in episode 62 where Will and I talk about LMS as surveillance. And we talked about Miro because they had just done some new updates around then uh, that gave us the ability to do stuff that I'm talking about right now. So uh, yeah, I love Miro. It's always going to have a special place in my heart for, for an educational tool. Wow. You know, when we put this idea together, Let's do something a little more personable, a little more social. Let's yeah. not have just an education topic for this. I, I wasn't quite sure what we were going to do with each other, what we were going to come up with. And I, I had a lot of fun. That was, yeah. that was a lot we, of fun. We crossed a spectrum of situations through those questions. That was, that was, that was an interesting journey that we just took. It was, uh, yeah. Well, that's episode 116. We are off into season one. Thank you for joining us again. Season one. Um, <laughs> We need time notes, travel. Please. We're back into season one. No, season five. <laughs> season five. We're starting things out. We've got a fun series coming this season. We've got a couple of good uh, uh, guests already lined up. Speaking of guests already lined up, this is episode 116. Next episode, we're going to have uh, a guest join us. Episode 117 is going to be with David Patlett. We had a great conversation with David. He has been. Um, everything but a teacher except he became a teacher right he yeah, was not trained exactly. he's he's this guy's a been this guy's been everywhere yeah he's a he's a college dropout no no offense no problem with that we actually love to hear how his story came together and what ended up and how he got on our radar um he left a couple of uh cool tools with us we're definitely going to hear about retro tool io can't wait to hear more about that with that episode with david next week or next time whenever you are in the world Quick reminder, if you forgot from before, we are going to be on Behind the Pod, Behind the Mic, excuse me, Behind the Mic with Chris Nessie uh, starting in November 2023. There's some episodes releasing soon. The trailer is already up. Head over to edupodcastnetwork.com where you can find all of our colleagues across the EPN, the Education Podcast Network, but you can also find the Behind the Mic podcast, which is launching shortly. And you'll be able to hear us and why we started this, how we got it all together, what the technical challenges can be, all sorts of fun stuff. As always, find us on Twitter and YouTube at High Tech Podcast. Most of the other socials are at High Tech Pod, like threads and Instagram, building those slowly yeah. but surely. Email us, inbox at hightechpod.us. Please let us know if you have an idea, if you've got a tool, if you if you know someone who should be on the podcast. If you you don't have to be the one that wants to come on. Tell us who should be on the yeah. podcast. We'd love to. You got a friend that you just want to throw on our podcast as a surprise? Throw I think that'd be great. Just yeah, throw like new, I, new new idea, right? I'm just tossing this out. We do like a, a you know how like friends can get people on like restaurant nightmares right, 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 or like right, you know right, reality right. TV yep. shows or whatever. It's of it's queer vote a friend like onto the high tech podcast, yeah. right? Like so, you tell us tell you us want why, your friend, who, why. Yeah. You tell us you want your friend on the high tech podcast. We you tell them that you're just getting in on a Zoom meeting, you know, or they they got to jump on and they're just on the podcast. <laughs> I love this idea. I actually really like this idea. I'm just tossing it out there. Uh, 
uh, for all of our social, for all of our um, websites, for all of our reviews, for all whatever, go to hightechpod.us. You can find everything, including our episode pages, which have more information about this episode and apps that we talked about. There's yep. one for every single one of our episodes. We really appreciate Josh for making those. Thank you, my friend. And as always, thank you all for taking the chance with us to go from episode one to 100 and 16. We hope you'll join us next week for another week as we continue to learn what it looks like to harness technology in the classroom, whether it's online or in person. See ya. See ya.